this covid has basically exposed everybody okay the technology was always there but certain practices which were not easily adopted adopted earlier have now been uh, adopted in the last 3 months so now suddenly what has happened is it's become remote working is accepted as normal and uh, i don't think we'll go back to the real real normal as it earlier was we are back with another guest in the people hum interview series i am your host sumita mariam and let's begin with a quick introduction of people hum people hum is an end to end one view integrated human capital management automation platform the winner of the 2019 global kodi award for hcm that is specifically built for crafted employee experiences and the future of work we run the people hum blog and video channel which receives upwards of 200000 visitors a year and publish around two interviews with well known names globally every month and now for our guest achit menon is the managing director of options executive search private limited he's a recruitment specialist and a career consultant he was ranked among the top 20 hr influencers in india by sharam in multiple years We are extremely happy to have him with us today. Welcome, Ashut. We're thrilled to have you. Thank you, Smita. Wonderful to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So let's move on to the interview. And you know, my very first question. So when I was going through your profile, your bio said helping people find their calling. Can you elaborate a little bit on the you know the good work that you do? Yeah. See, uh, I must remind you that. Uh, I'm 58 years old, okay? and I passed way back in 1984 after my MBA. The world was a totally different world then, okay? and those days uh, you got a job essentially because somebody knew somebody or your uncle knew somebody, okay? and then you typically once you got a job, okay, that was that built your career. And I'm talking about early late 80s, and. Uh, those days uh, it was lifetime employment and so typically the only uh, profession they were popular at that point of time were doctor engineer teacher banker kind of thing there's nothing like private industry and people joined and worked retired kind of thing so it was almost almost as if the employer decided uh, what skills you need and how to develop you and then they promoted you once in three four years that was the kind of thing So I it took me eight years in industry to realize that well I did well in the industry I was a regional sales manager and had all the corporate uh, perks and status and all that. Frankly, I really did enjoy what I did. Okay, the point was personally I'm a I love reading. I love interacting with people. I talk. I mean, engage in English and all that. So those were things which kind of made my life. Okay, and here I was regional sales manager. selling fertilizer and pesticides and automotive spare, spare parts and uh, traveling 20 days a month in villages which are 5000 less speaking vernacular language not exactly what i uh, wanted to do rest of my life okay? and so uh, i was and i spent a lot of time interviewing candidates for my company and i realized that i'm talking about 92 okay so i decided to start a recruitment agency then primarily to hire good sales guys okay and then train them and i thought it's all i wanted to help people find their calling okay because normally in that uh, generation we all picked up assignments because your father or somebody else said this is going to be the future of india okay but fortunately in hindsight 1992 india became liberalized and you had a lot of foreign companies which came in and uh, job hopping became uh, now accepted so today your generation is really lucky to kind of uh, pursue your passion it doesn't matter what you study um, it's all uh, you want to ride on your strengths and work with people you want to work with companies you want to at the terms you want to so I personally feel after the name, uh, the title, the job, what you do gives the identity to you. And so I thought, if you one were a happy person, he or she would have a great life. And so my, but being in between the industry and the uh, job seekers, I thought, okay, I'll do my bit to help other people find their calling. 
because it took me an MBA in eight years of running around the wrong direction. <laughs> Fortunately, uh, now things are all different. I'm, I'm talking about late 80s, early 90s, there was no Google, there was no LinkedIn, there was no Facebook, no social media, no internet, no mobile phone. The world was a totally different world at that time. Okay? Yeah. So yeah, so that still remains my primary driver uh, and uh, helping other people find their calling. And as a recruiter, frankly, it's a, it's a great job. You, know? you kind of uh, help other people uh, make, I mean, make a difference a lot of people. Yeah. Sorry if I uh, rambled a bit, but I guess you get a better idea of the whole context. That's very true. Any, for any person, their job is their identity and to have a job that you are actually, you know, happy to talk about, that's that's a blessing. So, um, you helping them find, you know, what they want to talk about and what they want to be called as, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> and, you know, there are a lot of conflicting opinions about the talent war now. How do you think the scenario will, you know, change in the coming years? Uh, I guess you guys have been interviewing a whole lot of, whole lot of HR gurus. Okay? So I have tempted to quote a very senior person who said, the war for talent is over. Talent is won. Okay? So, I mean, in the context that, uh, again, we go back to the industrial economy, where it was the employer who called on the shots. And like I earlier alluded, that uh, people were then hired and uh, no, promoted as and when the company thought it deemed no, the right time. And uh, post 90s, the information technology took over and thereby jobs were kind of democratized. Okay? And uh, of course, uh, now we are probably in the midst of uh, uh, internet technology or social uh, revolution kind of a thing, where I feel that. Um, the entire ball game has changed. The power of choice has gone away from the employer to the employee. Okay. So I don't think uh, it's anyway the war of talent. Like I earlier alluded, it now uh, this generation has a choice of working for themselves if they want, or working for multiple people. Uh, so the onus is on the company to kind of identify good talent and have a compelling reason for them to be coming and working with the employer. So I think that war for talent is a bit probably was uh, there about 10, 15 years back. But now I think everything is in the uh, hands of the employee or the, you, uh, everybody, a job seeker. Now you are a CEO of your own individual. Okay. I mean, that's the way I look at it now. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, there's a lot of talent and there are like gig workers, there are part-time giggers. So I think everyone's getting, you know, enough time to explore what they have in them. And, you know, organizations are also gaining a lot from it. So Yeah, yeah. because just, I mean, I, I like I told you about my age, my children, my daughter is 25, son will be 20. I don't think they, they have the same kind of expectations from a job which I probably had. In our time, it was security, glamour, status, and stuff like that. And both these people are driven by purpose. Okay, They want to make a difference where it comes. My, my daughter is, I mean, she studied from Bangalore Christ and then did a master's from Ashoka. And we just finished a liberal arts in UPenn. Uh, and uh, she is a journalist. But then... Unlike other journalists, she wants to work for the underdog, I mean, uh, uh, underdeveloped kind of people. She feels that a whole lot of people really have got a raw deal in life. And then she, I would even say that she kind of is an activist, it's the older economy kind of a thing, uh, older uh, people say that. But I, I mean, that's her calling. So I wouldn't really uh, uh, complain. But I feel that, yes, uh, the choice is in the individual today. The employer is just about incidental, is what I personally Yeah, and there is a lot of exposure also for everyone. Like, you know, when you're a kid, you know what's an HR job. So 
that that makes a lot of difference in what you know people want to do and even little school kids want to do they say you know i want to be that and as a kid even me i think when we were in school we could only think about four or five mainstream jobs and now everyone knows more about you know what's the scope of learning history what's the scope of learning geography yeah. you'd be surprised my wife is a phd in literature okay from iit madras and all that she's an educationalist and uh, she do uh, is quite disappointed with the older education system and then she been trying various uh, alternative education like uh, your world of and uh, uh, arbindo and you know, whole lot of things and they been part of a school where they like children to learn what to learn it's not to do with Uh, rote learning and stuff like that and so my son was fortunate he's 20 now and he was he was fortunate to kind of he can choose the subjects he wanted to right through his college uh, i mean like the schooling and then uh, he's he's also in ashoka right now and even now he's not decided what to do in life he's close to he's going to finally a ba so far he says okay i'm discovering what i want to study so he's picked up uh, he's done history he's done literature he's uh, done courses in sociology Uh, uh, and since so, so far, what are subjects I studied? I don't think I'll fancy you know, uh, spending my rest of my life there. So he is kind of trying to probe, and I suspect he might be a. He loves music and probably wants to uh, produce music and you know, do a bit of EDM and stuff. And so I said, fair enough. I mean, because uh, whatever we studied thirty years back and what our career is, nothing related. So I don't think you know. Uh, I mean, the, the the world has totally changed the last twenty years. So these kind of there are some myths like you know, you know war for war for talent. I, I really don't think it's war for talent. I think companies need to now compel uh, people to come and work with them because of purpose. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, so and also you know you work with recruitment and. Um, recruitment is, you know, said to be still an imperfect process. How do you think, you know, technology can simplify and, you know, help remove biases from the from this whole process? You may not like the answer which I say. Uh, yes, recruitment is still imperfect, and uh, in fact, uh, I wonder if you uh, come across there's this gentleman uh, who used to head uh, a very large recruitment firm. and he written several books and he calls interviews as a conversation between two liars yeah i've read that okay and so he says both of them are in that half hour are trying to cheat and fool each other okay so i personally feel recruitment is still uh, a broken piece okay and uh, if at all technology aids anything technology only will advance the bias bias which is there in hiring uh so uh personally i feel the positive part is that i mean i've been hiring now for 28 years recruitment can be further broken down to three or four vertical okay one is scoping okay. scoping as in even the job description part okay, to understand uh what a role does okay. then you have sourcing which is basically trying to get the right kind of talent then you have the screening part which is the assessment and stuff like that and finally the selection and of course onboarding so if you look at these kind of uh, uh, recruitment verticals some bits of them can be enabled by technology okay uh, but what we should understand is that the it's the humans which are going to make a difference unfortunately what has happened is uh, my generation and the previous generation has got a hangover of uh, trying to um, uh, explain things in the industrial economy way okay we still think humans are commodities okay and that's why this mass hiring it assumes that everybody is equal okay and there were a point of time when you, they wanted so many head counts they never but whereas each individual is a unique person and so really one can't be uh, standardizing that a batch of uh, bcom students from one college they are all act equally good versus other colleges so uh, 
so i personally feel uh, this technology will help us to certain things can be automated but it will aid the recruiter to spend a lot more time to understand the human aspect of it and so that's where the whole uh, future is going to be different uh, because today uh, i mean if you look at of course technology like glass door has come today even before i interview for a company i can actually go and find out okay i won't believe the uh, advertising campaigns of the company or the huge five page ads uh, you see in magazines but i will go and see glass door and see who, what the other people have said and so today social media technology are all it's made the life a uh, lot more level playing ground but it's up to us to kind of leverage to try and reduce the uh, anomalies so i don't know whether yeah that's what i mean talent brand is huge nowadays so and glassdoor is just you know um, helping a lot of candidates out there who are trying to get you know specific jobs so that's so true and uh, if, if, you know, if you look at it see uh, even as consumers now if you buy something from amazon or swiggy okay, the kind of experience you get is phenomenal you know exactly where uh the product is it's left to go down it's on the road it's near your colony you'll get in 5 minutes there's a certain amount of uh experience a customer has got thanks to technology but you look at yourself as a candidate applying for a job okay even now it's a dark hole okay you apply you don't even know if people are going to respond or you don't even know what is your uh, uh candidate your kind of a thing yeah. so and we have the same technology while we as consumers are using technology most companies are uh, guilty of not using technology to make it as transparent so i think uh, it's only going to get better and uh, i mean you can't take the human element of recruitment how much technology you have <laughs> yeah that is so true and you know let's change our focus a little bit to the hiring part of it and um, you know how do you hire for a cultural fit for an organization and um, you know how much does you know talent and aptitude and attitude play a part in hiring a person a yeah, good question uh, there are many many again uh, it's changing now okay uh, what i would personally feel is the problem with my exposure is you know, i am a third party recruiter i am i don't hire for my company i hire for my clients and typically they come to me only when they can't find talent themselves because most companies have their own internal recruitment teams they have external partners they have their own social media to hire people and after that when they can't find a person only they come to a third party agency like me okay. so i'm not so hung up about culture because i really can't impact that as much so that's where my uh, passion in terms of helping other people find their calling helps because i try and spend a lot of time with people understand what makes them tick what makes them do what they do and then if i take a client i try and understand every client is different okay it could be a startup it could be a growing company it could be a multinational company it could be a uh, multinational company expanding in new markets so every situation is different depending on the life cycle of growth of the organization they need different skills for people also so and then depending on the industry they are in and the kind of people okay uh, because often it's uh, only in an r&d job where it's entirely dependent on your knowledge most other jobs you need to interact with people be it internal stakeholders or outside people so as a third party recruiter i kind of try to understand who the person is working with what is the superior who is the kind of people he's going to peer group and the superiors and, all, and try and see whether this guy will fit into their culture in the first place. in terms of can they get along only if they get can get along all knowledge and skills are important so i personally would hire always for attitude okay. if the attitude is right 
the skills and knowledge can be imparted. Okay? You might pick it up in two months, I might pick it up in four months. Okay, But the fact is, the starting point is going to be attitude. So as a third party recruiter, my role is so different because every company's culture at uh, different uh, life cycles of growth is different. So yeah, I spent a lot of time trying to, it's almost like matchmaking. Okay, uh, though, but then uh, there's always a debate between love marriage and arranged marriage. Okay, but uh, a recruitment is kind of an arranged marriage. Okay? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a wonderful answer. That's, that's such a fresh perspective and, you know, um, I don't know, uh, a different kind of analogy to apply, but yeah, that, that was helpful. Okay, let me try and put it the way we Indians are used to. We are all, we love, love, love cricket. Okay, all of us follow cricket. But you realize that even in cricket, now you have three different teams. You, know? you have a test team, you have a one-day team and a T20 team. And they all have the same kind of players. Okay? Yeah. But the individuals to make it, very few handful of people make it to all the three sections. Yeah. Okay, the kind of Chetan Pujara, Pujara probably will fit into test. Okay, but he would not fit into the T20 and so. So they're all. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the skill. There's nothing wrong with the attitude or nothing wrong with that. I mean, the knowledge, whatever you talk about in terms of. But then the outcomes and the kind of environment, the ecosystem which is there in each of these games is different. So you actually have to hire for, I mean, we, uh, in recruitment, say, horses for courses. Okay. So I would feel that, that this will appeal to more Indians and then probably the Indian that is also unfortunately Indian story. Not much of foreigners will get to know, but it is a, what I'm trying to say is for, it is a lot to do with people. Yeah, that's so right. And you know that that was a wonderful answer, and you you made it more clear with this example again. Uh, so lastly, just to kind of you know end the interview process, if you have any last sound bites that you would like to leave our audience. Yeah. So um, I personally feel that um, I mean my advice to all job seekers, be it youngsters or middle managers or. Uh, senior people, this COVID has basically exposed everybody. Okay? The technology was always there, okay? but we are now a lot more and you know, companies which had pre-existing conditions, they have been badly affected. Okay, And uh, uh, we've now seen that technology is always there, but certain practices which were not easily adopt adopted earlier have now been uh, adopted in the last three months. So now suddenly what has happened is it's become remote working is accepted as normal. You and I are working from our respective home and probably doing this conversation. And uh, I don't think we'll go back to the real, real normal as it earlier was. And the future, I think, will be anywhere, anytime kind of jobs. And uh, it will change because companies, if they were earlier insisting you to come and work in the office, I think now... Uh, the kind of skills which are required on the other side of COVID will you know, call for different digital transformation kind of skills. So I have a feeling now um, it will be um, it will be jobs following the people and not people have to follow jobs. Okay. So personally, I would feel that uh, the onus of your career is now in your hands. Earlier, you could depend on, you could be a loyal to an employer and expected the employer to give you a promotion or the kind of annual increment and stuff like that. Today, it's squarely on you. So, my advice to everybody, A, follow your ins basic instincts, invest in yourself, okay? do what you love doing most and get paid for that. Okay, And I personally feel there is a need for each one of us to build our network. The people who will bail us out in these kind of stuff. Okay? And just like how we have um, financial consultants, have you heard of a wealth manager? A wealth manager is a person who helps high net worth individuals decide where to invest their money. Because most people who are well endowed with money, they're doing what they're doing well. So they don't know 
whether to invest in stocks or real estate or commodities or mutual funds or gold or whatever so there are financial consultants who probably advise them on how to maximize their wealth so i think the future will belong to even recruiters who can be like career managers so you could and for every professional your career also is a financial asset which you need to manage and so don't be hesitant to ask for advice don't be hesitant to look for mentors uh, the future of work is in your hands chill don't get side by other people who are be talking about the sky is falling and all that <laughs> wonderful wonderful this was an amazing conversation actually thank you so much for this and i i really hope this this interview you know helps as a catalyst acts as a catalyst for all our viewers you know to invest in themselves and be the ceo of their own careers so thank you so much for your time it was an absolute pleasure hosting you on our series today we really thank you so much. yeah i do um, yeah it's wonderful that you uh, uh, gave me the chance to voice my opinion Okay, I may not uh, be the uh, give the answers which most other interviews would have given. <laughs> It's totally tangential, but I guess we are all in the cusp of uh, you know a change. Okay, and I think uh, the better we are, you know, uh, prepared for that, the more happier we will be. Yeah, the better we will be. So thank you so much for your time and so much of your energy. We will stay in touch with you and have a healthy and safe time ahead of you. Thank you. Wish you all the best. Thank you.